With 95% of the world's consumers living outside of the United States, we have a tremendous opportunity to expand U.S. dairy exports. But what does it take for our industry to compete in the global marketplace? We're here today to give you a sneak peek at our Chairman's Lecture for the January 2014 Dairy Forum. I'm joined by Ambassador Ron Kirk, our former U.S. Trade Representative. He led negotiations to complete long-pending trade deals with South Korea, Colombia, and Panama. And he was on the front lines of enforcing trade rules with China and other foreign competitors. He also has first-hand knowledge of the impact trade agreements can have on our industry. Now, Ambassador Kirk, we're delighted that you'll be giving the Chairman's Lecture at the Dairy Forum in January. You said that as a nation, we need to find smarter ways to compete in global markets. Tell us what you mean. Well, first of all, I'm really excited about the opportunity uh, to be with my friends in the dairy industry. And Connie, thank you so much for the, the invite. And I think full disclosure, you know, I've been involved in the industry as a member of the board uh, of one of our more prominent dairy companies. And working with your industry in particular has been one of the more critical elements of our success in trade because no industry is more dependent on global markets than agriculture. And for America's sake, no industry has been more successful the last four or five years than agriculture in general. So um, ag and dairy in particular can help America understand that one of the ways to regain our fiscal um, um, prosperity, one of the ways to grow our economy is to take advantage of the reality that we now live in a world in which more and more consumers call someplace other than America home. Uh, but to do that, we've got to do as we've always done uh, as Americans, and then that's we should lead the world in developing, creating the next generations of products, whether they are um, technologically based or whether they're manufactured based or food based, that will feed the needs of an increasing population around the world. And I think as America continues to invest in innovation and in creativity, we can take advantage of the reality that there really are um, no better words globally than those that say made in America. Uh, and so I think embracing competition, embracing the opportunity to go compete uh, for these new consumers that are coming of age in markets around the world is a great way for us to sustain our way of life and grow our economy. The export of U.S. dairy products hit an all-time high last year and we continue to grow. That's great, but what opportunities and challenges do you see our industry facing over the next few years? Well, the biggest opportunity is one, um, and obviously I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, your industry knows, but that's something of a sea change for the dairy industry, our domestic industry, for the one, uh, for the most part, has historically dominated the North American market, and exports has been a, a new trend for us. That can be a real growth area for the dairy industry, uh, when in America, as we were talking, domestic consumption of fluid milk continues to decline year over year. So one, it's a great way to sort of equalize that and grow a market by exporting more. The opportunity is fairly simple. Uh, we live in a world now in which there are potentially three and a half billion people that are going to have an appetite and the ability to afford um, food and protein and products that couldn't. But we also live in a world and not every country is as blessed as we are in America to meet our own consumptive needs, but also have the ability to contribute to those of others. So one, um, uh, the challenge and the opportunity is just the whole issue around food security. Uh, but I just happen to have a lot of faith um, in the American farmer, uh, the American spirit. I believe if we're willing to take on that challenge, we can meet it, we can win, uh, and we can succeed. You've said we have an extraordinary window to re-engage the world with products that are made in America. And we're certainly experiencing that window of opportunity for dairy. In your experience, which is more important, enforcing existing agreements or negotiating new ones? Well, I think the answer to both is yes. And one of the things I'm most proud of uh, when I'm asked to sort of reflect on my tenure as USTR was our willingness to come in and honestly assess the state of play of, of how Americans view trade. Um, and I'm gonna take a little bit of time with this because I think it's important. When I was asked to assume this portfolio by President Obama uh, in 2009, Americans 
attitude about trade may have been a historic low. The Wall Street Journal did a poll later that year and asked Americans, without a lot of, you know, trying to influence, just basically on balance, do you believe trade, free trade has been good for America? 70% of Americans said no. And what we found and what really began to shock some of our friends in Washington that are more progressive on trade, the biggest movement against trade wasn't blue collar, you know, union workers in the industrial Northwest. It was white collar, college educated Republican voters who were beginning to associate trade with a shift of white collar jobs. And so Americans had felt uh, on balance that one, we get the consumptive benefits of trade. The good thing about trade is it brings competition and diversity and creativity into the marketplace. And the consumer wins from that. You have more choices, better products at lower prices. But what we heard over and over again is we don't want to swap cheaper t-shirts and laptops for all the jobs going somewhere else. But the other undercurrent that I heard over and over again, particularly from industries like yours that are involved in trade, is that we don't mind a fair competition, but my God, we've opened up our American market to all of these products around the world. Why can't we get in theirs? And so what I heard from folks was that they understood trade could be good, but the biggest complaint was nobody's holding these people accountable. Nobody enforces the rules we had. And so as important as it is for America not to lose ground in the race for new markets, I think it's equally important to demonstrate that we will do one simple thing, and that's we're going to ask all of our trading partners, you got to play by the same rules that we did. And so we elevated enforcement of our existing trade agreements to the same level as we did the importance of negotiating new agreements. And I think one of the reasons we were able to later go forward and pass three agreements in one year, in one evening, with Korea, Panama, and Colombia, is that we had demonstrated a real commitment to fighting for the rights of American farmers and manufacturers and workers by enforcing our agreements. So I don't think it's an either, the short answer is not an either or proposition. We've got to do both if we're going to succeed. You've called for the U.S. to aggressively open up new markets, especially in Asia and the Pacific Rim. In that respect, how important are the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreements? Well, I think the Trans-Pacific Partnership is important for a number of reasons. And one, it demonstrates the practical approach that our administration brought uh, to finding new markets in that we were concerned first and foremost with jumpstarting our economy. And the one thing that we made a commitment to was that we would, um, as I like to say, take the open shot. I had a high school basketball coach who was wonderfully practical and helped me to understand that my, my talents were not in trying to dunk over our six foot five center, that maybe I should take the ball outside. And his point was, you know, life basketball competition's easier. Take the opportunity that's in front of you. And the reality is we would very much love to see one globally encompassing trade agreement that simplifies the rules and opens up markets, which was the attempt in the Doha round but as we know, that stalled, probably not gonna move, but we can't wait for the rest of the world to come around to the way we think we ought to be approaching trade. And that's why we moved forward aggressively with bilateral agreements and one of the reasons we joined the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It is the largest multilateral trade negotiation going on in the world, in a world in which more and more of the emerging economies are beginning to slow down the one area most economists believe is going to continue to grow and produce consumers who can afford and want to buy the products your, your members are, are making is in the Asia Pacific. And so just out of, we think, a matter of, of, of pragmatism, we want to be in that game. But we also believe it's important for the United States to realize we have two front doors. For most of the last century, transatlantic trade dominated the world between the U.S. and Europe. We benefited marvelously from that. That's not a bad thing. But we've also recognized we have this other front door called the Asia Pacific. And these are countries that have an affinity, deep relations with the United States for strategic and other reasons. And we believe it's important for us to be involved in that. Third, this is the first opportunity I think we've had to get in on the ground floor of negotiating 
the ground, the, the rules of the game for trade for the next century. For the most part, we've worked off a model that was developed in the 1960s and 70s. The way we do business has changed radically because of technology, communications, so many other factors, and we want to make sure that trade reflects those realities of doing business today. And so giving America's farmers, manufacturers access to the fastest growing economic region in the world we think only makes sense. Ambassador Kirk, we look forward to hearing more about international trade from you at our Dairy Forum in January. Thank you for a glimpse into what we might hear from you. I'm excited about the opportunity to be with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thanks. I hope you will join us January 26th to 29th, 2014 at the JW Marriott Desert Springs Resort and Spa in Desert Springs, California. See you then.